So glad I know what what Jesus what is to me. Oh, we might as well go ahead and ask the church. Huh? There's a man at the river Giving sight to the blind, y'all There's a man at the river Yeah, he's giving sight to the blind, y'all I didn't do no writing but my name is shown a sign. I didn't do no writing. Yes, but my name, my name is shown a shown a sign. Our God and our Father. God, we bless you this morning. Thank you so much for just waking us up this morning, allowing us to see another day that was never promised. And for that, Lord, we tell you thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Hide me behind the cross so that they may hear you through me. And we'll be very quick and careful to give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. I would like to give all honor to God. I would like to thank Pastor Brown. I love you so much. First Lady, thank you so much. I love you. To my church family, what a celebration for 38 years. While we celebrated doing Black History Month, thank you all for being here. Um, to my family, uh, uh, Mama, my mama, I'm not here, but my other mama is here. James, my brother, and my wife, thank you all for being here. Um, to my GCBC family and to all that's here, thank you. There is a word. If you have your Bibles or if you have your phones, um, I heard someone say that it's not a smartphone if you don't have a Bible app. Uh, if you do have your Bibles, please turn with me to the book of Jude. To the book of Jude. Uh, you will find Jude right next to Revelations. If you are there, would you um, please say amen, and we're going to start reading. I'm going to start reading at verses 24. And it says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before 
the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Uh, to put a subject on these two verses, um, go ahead and look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. the subject is going to be, he has the whole world in his hands. You may be seated. He has the whole world in his hands. When looking at this text, I discovered that these two verses are called a doxology. A doxology, my sisters and brothers, watch this, is a short hymn or verbal a written exhortation simply to give God praise. And my brothers and sisters, when you look at this doxology and others, it's interesting because you will, you will always notice the person that is receiving the praise and the reason for the person receiving the praise. Matter of fact, there are some very familiar ones, which is Romans 16 and 25. Ephesians 3 and 20, and Jude right here, verses 24 and 25. And when you look at all three of these scriptures, my brothers and sisters, you will find out that the writer is suggesting that you would notice the person that is receiving the praise and why they are receiving the praise. Um, um, Ephesians 3 and 20 says, it starts with, now unto him. Romans 16 and 20 says, now unto him. And Jude 24 begins with, now unto him. Now, now, when you take a look at this, this text, Jude closes this chapter not with a benediction, but with a doxology, because he's not asking God to do something. He's not asking God to bless him with something. But what he's doing is that he's praising God for who he is and what he has already done. So Jude encourages the church and warns them of the opposition that they are going to face. Um, how they're going to face false teachers that's, that's already inside the church, spreading false doctrine. So he alerts them, he alerts them to, 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 to make sure they take every effort and stand for their faith. So now, since Jude has told them to be aware, be alert, and push through, he now encourages, right here in verses 24 and 25, he encourages the believers to move beyond a place of asking God for something, to move into a place where we find ourselves having a lifestyle of praising God for everything. So, so I believe that Jude is expressing that regardless of how things are going, regardless of how things or what things look like, him deserve the praise. So, so, so go ahead and tell your neighbor, him deserves the praise. Uh, the, the Apostle Paul says that he, he kind of has the same testimony when he was writing to the church in Ephesus. In, in the middle of his thinking process, he stops Mr. TJ and says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. And brothers and sisters, I suggest that this is important because when you look at this text, Jude recognizes that oftentimes the enemy will creep inside and create circumstances and situations that brings problems and pressures inside the church. Watch this, that, that is intentionally designed to stop you from praising God. And Jude seems to suggest that as believers in him, we should not want to develop a lifestyle to wait 
till the victory comes uh, um, and then give God praise. Uh, um, we, we should not wait until we come over mountains of problems and, and dangers. Jude says that we should develop a doxological lifestyle. Oh, I, like, I like that word. I like that word. Meaning that we want to develop a lifestyle of giving God praise, giving God the honor and glory on a daily basis, even if you have some circumstances and situations that you can't seem to overcome, some problems that you can't solve. You suggest that you should go ahead and open up your mouth and give God some praise because that's something that happens when you praise the Lord. I, I, I know I know I'm right about it because it's somebody in here right now like me that has some problems. But what you did is that you put a praise on that problem. And, and, and the Lord took that problem and worked that thing out because there's something powerful about praise. And, and so my brothers and sisters, you notice that as believers on this Christian journey, we should recognize what kind of God we serve and, and give him all the praise and honor because he has the whole world in his hands. So, so Miss Tilly, Miss Tilly Jude tells us that it's three things that we should recognize and be aware because we should always give him praise because he protect us from falling. He prepare us faultless. And, and he provide for us fully. So the first thing Jude wants us to notice is how he protect us from falling. Tell your neighbor, protect us from falling. The text says, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. When, when you look at this, I must confess that I stopped at now. Oh, y'all got to see it. Watch this. The text says now. My brothers and sisters, um, this now is a conjunction. And, 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 and the function of the conjunction is to connect what's before with what is after. So, so when Jude says now, Jude is saying that I know you're under attack. I know that things seems like it's going downhill because of the attacks and the assaults of the false doctrine. But Jude says now. Um, watch this protection. Jude says, now unto him. I, I, I mentioned him earlier, uh, um, Reverend Jones. I mentioned him earlier, and it seems like y'all don't know who him is. Um, Jayana, him is, is, is the rose of Sharon. Him, him is the lily of the valley. Him is the bright and morning star. Him is the wheel in the middle of the wheel. Him is Cain's vindicator, Mary's baby, Abraham's promise, Jacob's ladder, doctors in the sick room, lawyer in the courtroom, mother. Father, friend, Jew says now unto him who's able to keep us from falling. My brothers and sisters, when you look at this word able, it means power. To have the power to do something to have the capability and the ability to achieve whatever you want to do when you want to do it. And, and it's supernatural power. In other words, Jew says that him never runs out of power. He's continually, continually exercising his power. So Jew says, now unto him who have the power to keep me from falling. Notice, notice the protection uh, uh, because this word keep, my brothers and sisters, means guard, to protect. Um, um, in other words, it's a picture of, of Roman soldiers patrolling the external and the internal walls of the city. Uh, um, so no one can, can get inside. Uh, um, Reverend Brooks, so everyone now is secure and, and, and safe. 
So Jude is simply saying that because he has the whole world in his hands, he has the power to guard you from falling. Yeah. Now right here, watch this. Jude, Jude want you and I to know and, and to be very clear that this falling does not mean that you are falling out of salvation. Uh, this falling does not mean that you are falling to be unsaved. Um, this is important because a lot of people believe that you can lose your salvation. You, you can fall from being saved. You can be saved today and be unsaved tomorrow. Uh, when Jude says that he can keep you from falling, he's not saying that you can fall out of salvation. Matter of fact, matter of fact, in verse 1, he puts it like this, that uh, as believers, we are preserved. Oh, you got to see what he's saying. It, it, uh, in verse 1, Jude says that the saints are preserved in Jesus Christ. And, and right here, Morgan Jude is simply saying that once you are saved, you are sealed until the day of redemption. Because you, you are saved not by works, but by faith. And, and if you didn't work to get saved, you can't do some kind of work to get unsaved. So my brothers and sisters, when Jude uses the word falling, he's simply saying stumble, to slip. Um, um, it's a picture of a beginner mountain climber um, always attaching themselves to the seasoned expert. And the reason why they attach themselves is that if for some reason the beginner, the inexperienced mountain climber slips on a rock, while they climbing and lose their footing because they they are uh, they can't lose their footing because they are attached to somebody who has the ability and the capability to hold them up if they lose their footing and slip and fall to their death. Oh, oh, that's good news, my brothers and sisters, because Jude is testifying that as believers in Jesus Christ, we are attached to someone who has the ability and the capability to keep us by the hand and to hold us up while he navigate us through this slippery world that we call life. And, and, and I should get a few amens right here because it's real easy to fall into some stuff that the Lord has already brought you out of. Oh, y'all better come on and talk to me. It's real easy to fall back to people, places, and things that the Lord has already brought you from. But Jew says we have a God that is able to protect us from falling. Uh, now I know what you mean, Reverend Elsie, because if it wasn't for the power of the Lord, I would have fallen a long time ago. I, I would have fallen back into some habitual habits. I would have fallen back to lying lips, slipping my way back around corners. But Jude says that we should recognize his supernatural power because his power is greater than my past. And, and the only reason why we haven't fell or fallen is that we have a God that is able to keep us from falling. Uh, that's good news, my brothers and sisters, because the fact that we all are still here is a sign that he's still keeping us. Uh, because the enemy on a daily basis is trying to sift you and I away so that we won't give him the praise. Well, I understand a little better, Pastor, when, when, when David says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He that delighted, delighted in his way, though he fall, he shall not be uttered, cast down, for the Lord upholded him with his hand. You want us to understand that it's a sweet fellowship that happens when he's keeping us with his keeping power. I believe that's why the songwriter says, what a fellowship. 
What a joy to find. I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness. What a peace is mine. I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, y'all better come on. This black history, don't y'all remember that? I'm leaning, leaning, say, come on, y'all better come on with it. He says he's, he's protecting us from falling. Jude says not only should we praise him because we serve a God that can protect us from falling, but we praise him also because we serve a God that can prepare us falsehoods. Tell your neighbor, prepare us, us faultless. The text says, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Now, when you look at this, watch this, because Jew really opens our eyes and reveals to us something about God's character that man never can do. He says that he can prepare us faultless. This word faultless, my brothers and sisters, I really had to, to think about this, Coach, because this word faultless means blameless. Uh, tell your neighbor blameless. A Jew says that he's able to present you and I blameless. Uh, watch this. Blameless, my brothers and sisters, is a picture of an animal without any blemish. Uh, this is a, 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 without any blemish that is placed on the altar for a sacrifice. <laughs> Ooh, this Jew says that he's able to present you and I faultless. Uh, um, now, now, Reverend Howard, I, I, I tripped out because I said, how can this be? Uh, um, how can he present me faultless when I still have some fault? Uh, Cliff, I asked him, how can he present me blameless when I still have some blame? When, when, when I still don't dot every I and I don't cross every T. A uh, matter of fact, scriptures even says in Isaiah 64 and 6, it says, for we all become one who is ceremonially unclean like a leopard. And all of our deeds of righteousness are like filthy rags. We, we all, uh, I didn't say me, I didn't say me. He says we all, uh, uh, we all wither and decay like a leaf. And, and our wickedness, Rodney, our wickedness, Rodney, our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoing, like the wind takes us away, carrying us far from God's favor um, towards destruction. Um, um, but he said me, you, he's going to prepare us faultless. Um, now, 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 Romans 3 and 10 says, as it is written, this, 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 there is none righteous. No, not one. So the question is, the question is, Miss Howard, how? Woo. Boy, Louisiana, they will say, et <laughs> He says, how can he present me? Well, I'm glad you asked because you need to know that there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. And sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilt to stain. Look at how he prepares us because Jew says God is able to present me faultless because of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. He, Hebrews 9 and 14 says, how much more than will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself, unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death so that we may serve a living God. And, and, and that's good news, brothers and sisters, because God looks at you. It, when he looks at you, He's not looking at who you are, but he's looking at what you have become. 
because of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And, and that's good news, brothers and sisters, because that means that Jesus Christ know the worst and, about all of us in here. And he still said, go ahead and take my hand and nail it to the cross. Go ahead and take my feet and nail it to the cross. Go ahead and pierce me in the side to the cross. Go ahead and put 72 thorns on my head. In, in, in other words, my brothers and sisters, he knew the worst about you and I. And he still laid his life down and died for you and I. That's something to praise him about. Reverend Tilly, I didn't know then, but I know now. What it means to, to really means, when, when it, what it really means when I hear that the blood that he shed for me. Way, way, way back on Calvary, um, it's the blood that gives me strength. From day to day, it will never lose its power. Excel, he said, is, it reaches to the highest, to the highest mountain. And it flows to the lowest valley. It says the blood, X, the blood. Uh, look, look how he's preparing us. Uh, that even though we are going to mess up, uh, but one day we are going to be presented based on what we shall become. Uh, because right now I'm still in my fleshly body. Right now I still sin and come short of his glory. And every now and then I say things, baby, and I go places I shouldn't go. But Jude says because of the blood that we should praise him because he prepares us faultless. Uh -uh. Because scripture says one day, for we know that if our earthly tabernacle will dissolve, our earthly house would go back to dust, meaning that I'm going to be changed. I'm going to have a brand new body when I stand before the Lord. That's something to praise him about. So Jude says, praise him because he protects us from falling. Praise him because he prepare us faultless. But finally, my brothers and sisters, Jew says praise him because he provides for us fully. The text says now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Jew says, my brothers and sisters, that he's providing us with exceeding joy. James, I had to ask him, what kind of joy is exceeding joy? Uh, Jude told me to tell y'all that it's the kind of joy that money can't buy. Jude told me to tell y'all that it's the kind of joy that's providing us um, uh, that, that, that makes you want to run when nobody ain't even chasing you. Jude says it's the kind of joy that makes you cry when nobody bothering you. He says it's the kind of joy that make you dance when nobody ain't even playing no music. Jew says that it's the kind of joy that make you want to wave your hands and nobody ain't even waving back at you. Jew says that it's the kind of joy that the world didn't give it to you and the world can't take it away. And so my brothers and sisters, Jew is not talking about my joy but he's talking about the joy of Jesus Christ, which is his character, which is his glory, his majesty, his dominion, and his power, both now and forever. And so my brothers and sisters, Jude says that God has the whole world in his hands. And the reason, one good reason to give him all the glory and all the praise is because if he would have failed, 
there will be no cavalry. And if there is no cavalry, then there would be no resurrection. Mm, and if there is no resurrection, then there wouldn't be no salvation. So I came with good news this morning that the God we serve so enough died. Not only did he die, but the Bible says he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all my fears are gone. That's why Jew says you have no other choice but to give him praise. Because if it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Because where I am, the Lord brought me. What I know, the Lord taught me. Who I am is who he made me. And the reason why we should praise him it's because if we all can exhale, and if we all can inhale, we all should praise him. I said if we all can exhale, and if we all can inhale, we all should give him praise. Because the Bible said, let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Praise him because he protect you from falling. Praise him because he prepare us faultless. Praise him because he provide for us fully. May God bless you.